Welcome to the 21st lecture on calculus. Today we will discuss sandwich theorem for functions of single variables. So let me first recall the definition of limit of a function quickly. So you consider a function from d to r where d is a subset of r and we call it domain of f. And suppose c is a point which satisfies certain condition that d contains a deleted r neighborhood of c for some positive real number r. What I mean that d contains an open interval like this c minus r comma c plus r around c except possibly this point c itself. So d may or may not contain this point c and in that case we can talk about limit of this function f at the point x equal to c. So with the above hypothesis for a real number l the following are equivalent. The first condition is saying that for every sequence x suffix n in this set if that sequence converges to c then this sequence given by this function value it converges to L. So that is condition 1 and condition 2 is saying that for every positive real number epsilon there exists a positive real number delta such that for all points of D which lie in this deleted delta neighborhood this function value f of x it lie in the epsilon neighborhood of L and the function f has a limit L at x equal to c if it satisfies one of these equivalent conditions and in that case we write f of x tends to l as x tends to c limit of f of x at x equal to c it is l and next we see what is sandwich theorem for functions. So you consider three functions f, g and h all are from this domain d to r and c is some point and suppose you have this relation that f of x less than or equal to g of x less than or equal to h of x for all x belongs to this domain. And suppose limit of f of x and limit of h of x uh, exist at x equal to c and both are same as L. So this is your hypothesis and then this theorem is saying that limit of g of x at x equal to c it exists and it is same as L. The sandwich theorem for sequences of real numbers that we have discussed in lecture 6 and using those results we can easily prove this theorem. Okay. So you consider a sequence in this set which converges to C then we just need to prove that this sequence it converges to L. Okay. We will use the definition of limit in terms of sequences of real numbers. So since you have this condition, so you use this hypothesis, so using that you have this relation so and this thing holds true for all natural numbers n and since L this is the limit of f of x, so f converts it should converge to L and since L is also the limit of h of x, h of xn it should converge to L also. Okay. So then you can use sandwich theorem for sequences of real numbers. And you can conclude that limit n tends to infinity g of xn that should be same as L. Thus, using the definition of limits in terms of sequences of real numbers, one can conclude that this limit exists and it is same as L. Okay, and this is your sandwich theorem. So next, using sandwich theorem, let's compute this limit. Okay, so your function it is from d to r where g of x it is given by uh, x times cos of 1 by x for all x belongs to this domain and your domain is collection of all non-zero real numbers. So using sandwich theorem we obtain that this limit is 0. So this is our claim and let us prove that. So you all know this relation that cos of something it is always its absolute value it is always less than or equal to 1. So then if you multiply both side by absolute value of x so mod x you will get this inequality and from here you will get that for all x belongs to this domain you have this thing. Okay? So minus absolute value of x it is less than or equal to x times cos upon by x less than or equal to mod x and since limit x x tends to 0 that is 0 that you know. So here you are considering f of x it is x okay? and then this thing it implies so using this you can also have that this limit is that is also 0. 
so you have this limit is zero and also this is negative of that is also zero so you can apply sandwich theorem to get the result so using sandwich theorem you can conclude that limit of this thing that will also be zero so here is the inequality on limits so if you have inequality on functions values then you will have inequality on their limits so that is this theorem so you consider two functions and suppose f of x less than or equal to g of x for all x belongs to this domain d and suppose limit of f of x it exists at x equal to c and it is same as l1 and limit of g of x at x equal to c it exists and it is same as l2 so then so this is your hypothesis and then you can conclude that this limit l1 that is less than or equal to l2 so again we will use the definition of limits in terms of sequences of real numbers so you consider a sequence in this set which converges to c and since you have this inequality you also have this inequality f of xn less than or equal to g of xn for all natural numbers n and it follows from lecture 6 again that limit n tends to infinity f of xn that is less than or equal to limit n tends to infinity g of xn so since l1 is the limit of f of x so this limit it is same as l1 and since l2 is the limit of g of x at x equal to c so this limit it is same as l2 so you will have l1 less than or equal to l2 so the converse of this theorem that is also true so so we can state the converse in this way so you consider two functions f and g both from d to r and suppose this limit exists and it is l1 and this limit exists and that is l2 and you have inequality on the limits then what can you say about uh, the inequality on the function values so if l1 less than l2 then one can conclude that there exists certain positive real number delta such that for all x belongs to d and this deleted delta neighborhood of c this function value f of x that is less than this function value g of x so how to prove this thing so we will use this proposition that we have discussed in the previous lecture so what is that so suppose uh, you have a function g from d to r and suppose this limit exists at x equal to c and it is m which is a non-zero real number then there exists a positive real number delta such that for all x in this set so for all x belongs to d and this deleted delta neighborhood of c this function value g of x is non-zero so to prove this theorem we use this proposition and its proof so uh, we, to prove this proposition we have uh, this thing so here you consider a particular epsilon so since m is the limit of g of x then for this particular epsilon there exists a positive real number delta such that for all points x belongs to d and if this x belongs to this related delta neighborhood of c then this uh, function value g of x it, it it belongs to the epsilon neighborhood of m so you have this inequality and we, we will just use this inequality okay so okay so if m is greater than 0 then you can actually take epsilon that is m by 2 and in this case it is so it is same as m by 2 and then g of x it is so less than or equal to 3m by 2 and it is so ultimately you will get g of x that is greater than or equal to m minus m by 2 so it is same as m by 2 so if m is 0 then there exist there exist delta greater than 0 such that uh, x belongs to this deleted delta neighborhood intersection d that implies g of x it is greater than 0 so we will use this fact to prove this theorem okay so here you set h of x that is difference between g of x and f of x and since l1 is the limit of f of x and l2 is the limit of g of x so limit of h of x that exists and it is same as this this thing l2 minus l1 so here we are using the relation between limits and subtraction okay so since l2 is greater than l1 you have that this thing is positive so you are getting that this limit it is positive 
So then you use this fact that if limit is positive then you will get you will have certain delta such that for all points x in this related delta neighborhood and d this function value it is positive. So here you will get that there exists delta such that for all x belongs to this set this h of x it is positive ok and from here you can get that g of x that is greater than f of x ok for all x belongs to this thing ok. So thus using the proof of this proposition we can prove this theorem and that's all I will stop now.